Mortgage companies have reported a 67% increase in foreclosures. Now, that seems like a lot, but remember that at this time last year, mortgage foreclosures were not happening. They were barely allowed. So there was always going to be this period of catching up. Uh, now, here is some perspective. New foreclosures, which are known as starts because the mortgage company is sort of starting the process of putting you into foreclosure, that is under normal times around 40,000 a month. That means normal times, 40,000 people a month are getting foreclosed on on their mortgage for non-payment. Well, during the pandemic, that was only around three or 4,000, so less than one-tenth of what they normally are. Now they are up around 25,000 per month. So they are catching up, but still well below the national average. But it will feel like a lot to us because people were comfortably in their homes, perhaps not paying, right? For a long period of time due to the pandemic, this is very similar to the eviction crisis that we're gonna see because evictions were not allowed for the last year or so. When it finally does start to catch up, it's gonna feel like, oh my God, people are just, mass exodus from the neighborhoods that is sort of what's happening right now we are around like i said twenty five thousand per month um so why is this is it because banks are catching up is it because more people are not paying or shall we see this as a relatively no low number twenty five thousand versus 40 in normal times meaning that some of the stimulus has worked meaning people actually used it to pay their mortgage um it's hard to tell right now because economists have not parsed out that data. I mean, some of the states, too, if we go through some of the state data here, California, 3,400 foreclosures, Texas, 2,800, Florida, 2,500, New York, 1,300, Illinois, 1,300. Um, Executive Price Ves Vice President at Realty Track, Rick says, uh, Rick Sharga says, despite the increased level of foreclosure activity, um, sorry. I lost my spot. Despite the increased level of foreclosure activity in September, we're still far below historically normal numbers. Um, you know, if you're getting out of these forbearance programs and you don't have access to them, um, the number of borrowers that are going to be bailed out is, I mean, is going to drop, right? Because yes. we're not bailing these people out anymore. Um, I, I think, you know, there were a lot of people like my friend Ken McElroy, who is a, a you know, genius real estate investor, has written a number of books on real estate. Um, and that's what his whole business is, real estate and real estate investing. He thinks that come 2022, we are going to see a massive foreclosure crisis. I mean, it's highly possible because the banks made it quite easy for people to claim COVID related hardship and uh, put off their mortgage payments, right. right? But that was not free months living. And I think maybe too many people did not understand that, sort of like the Truth in Lending Act. That was not that clear what you were saying. Oh, I'm not going to pay right now, but those bills will come due. Um, and so it is possible that 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 also rains down on us. But there were a lot of opportunities to talk to the bank, too, within the last 12 months to prove hardship. Right. Um, to say, you know, look, I, I, I'm struggling right now. I've lost my job. The banks, I, I want to say, did a good job of offering you like every time I logged into just my bank balance, there was a big pop up like, do you need some help with COVID? You know, and I'm like, no, I'm just doing bill pay, you know, right. Just a, checking my stuff out. I'm here. just <laughs> paying my electricity bill if that's okay by you. I don't need this help. But, um, you know, I do think that th it, with any kind of program that is not within the norm, it's going to it's going to cause some confusion. Another big piece of this. So you, you mentioned the foreclosure issue over the past few weeks. We're starting to see those numbers. But another thing has to do with this. Infa I mean, everything these days has to do with the infrastructure package. OK. And this morning, uh, the American Prospect has a really interesting piece about how the Build Back Better's housing investment is at risk. We've been hearing quite all of, you know, about the other pieces of it. And as they point out in this piece, um, it hasn't been grabbing headlines. They're not talking about it. And right now, Democrats, frankly, are going through and they're looking for things to cut. Why? Because Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema don't want to spend the money towards some of these more progressive programs. They'd rather have this money going to, uh, you know, their, their, their lobbyist friends, making sure that they're making money. So among the things that are could be on the chopping block are the housing provisions. And there are some really, really good pieces of this that are in the housing provisions. Um, as this American Prospect piece points out, as yet, housing finds itself squarely in the crosshairs of both the White House and the knife-wielding Democrats in Congress who are looking for things to cut. 
According to a source with knowledge of negotiations, at least one senior advisor to the president has suggested sacrificing the housing package in its entirety to make sure that the passage of everything else goes through. So Politico reports that $330 billion pot of money for the housing stuff is basically imperiled at this point. What are you talking about when you say the housing stuff? Well, like, okay, let's what go is through. this supposed to be spent on? Right. The proposals in the housing package run the gamut from down payment assistance to a huge infusion of uh, cash for Section 8 housing vouchers to also filling the funding gaps in the largest and most aggressive underfunded public housing authorities. There's money for new construction, for affordable housing, for climate-oriented retrofitting of buildings and houses, for community land trusts, and more. Um, and progressives have said, you know, this is Maxine Waters who really put her hat on this. This is her sort of crown jewel. Um, and this could, you know, there's a lot of progressives who have signed on to this. Rashid Tlaib, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Um, but this whole thing now could mm -hmm. be in jeopardy thanks to, thanks to people like Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema who want to reduce. And by the way, this just hasn't gotten a lot of headlines. No, I'm not familiar with this. It seems very broad, but also like well-intentioned, helping people get into their first house. So I'd be interested in seeing like what specific pieces need, you know, are on the chopping block. Well, one of the things they point out is that housing, especially public housing, has been underfunded for decades, literally. And the reason for it, it's contributed to skyrocketing prices. Um, it would close the funding gap that has existed um, since HUD was founded in 1965. It would also try to help those who um, have been unable to get a first time home. You know, they've been yes. priced out of it. They've not been able to get to the down payment assistance. Um, and so a lot of these things would help in that regard. But again, you know, if it's not um, if it's not somehow tied to Wall Street and there's no money for big Wall Street firms to make some money off of this, um, you, you well, start to cut the things. On the contrary, there could be opportunities for Wall Street to lose money. For this kind of thing, right? Yeah, I mean, banks, uh, more I wonder if banks lending would fight. products, um, lower down payments, right? Cause, yeah, because banks stand to make money off of this. Right, absolutely. So, Thanks for subscribing to the channel. You can also become a channel member by going to morninginvest.com slash join, where you can stick it to the mainstream media and support independent journalism. We're able to bring you the stories that you won't see on any of the major billionaire-backed networks. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time, everyone.